This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, and I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. So I'm taught the Word of God. My life is changed for the better, and I will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I know we've got people from around the world watching our services, either live or later on, on their schedule. So you can uh, click share if you're watching through one of the social media platforms and get the word out, because this right here will change your life forever. We're in this series on the truth about money, and today's message is faith can be seen. Say it out loud. Faith can be seen. As we begin this new year, let me say that I wish you love, I wish you joy, I wish you every happiness, I wish you physical health and length of life, I wish that your life would be as blessed and as full and as fulfilling as mine has been, I wish you love, I declare without equivocation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that 2021 is a year of miracles for Faith Christian Center and the families of Faith Christian Center. I believe that as we take action on the word that we've heard here at Faith Christian Center, every dream and every vision comes to pass this year, this month, right now, today, in Jesus' holy name. Say it out loud. God will do in my life whatever I believe he will do. And God will do in my life whatever I say he will do. I believe 2021 will be for me my family, and this church, a year of miracles. Amen? You know, it's the first Sunday of the year, so let's charge the atmosphere in this place with a spirit of faith this morning. Say it out loud. I'll never be broke another day in my life. I'll never be sick another day in my life. I'll never be defeated another day in my life. I'll never be in bondage another day of my life. My broke days in every area of life, are over. Hallelujah. Now, people are under the mistaken notion that they can attend a faith church like this, make a few positive confessions, and then automatically walk in the miraculous. Well, it just isn't so. In order to walk in the miraculous, you will actually have to be a doer of the Word of God. What I'm saying is, answered prayer healing, and miracles are available. But you have to take action to make those blessings yours. The title this morning is Faith Can Be Seen, and here is proof from the Word of God that faith can be seen. Let's go to James 2.18. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. And there it is, and it's been in your Bible the whole time, I will show you my faith by what I do. Say it out loud. Faith can be seen. Faith can be seen. Say it again. Faith can, be seen. faith can be seen. Number one, if you're taking notes, faith is not belief and belief is not faith. Faith is not belief and belief is not faith. James 2, 17, in the same way faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Verse 19, you believe that there is one God good, even the demons believe that and shudder. Verse 20, faith without deeds is useless. Verse 26, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Say it out loud, faith without deeds is dead. Faith without deeds is dead. In verse 24, a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. Now, words can be misunderstood. Different words can be taken as synonyms that aren't really synonyms. Words like belief and faith are taken to be synonyms when really, in fact, they are not. Many people assume that when they are exercising faith, they are believing, and that when they believe, they are exercising faith. 
And that is where many Christians are missing out on the blessings of God. Faith and belief are as different as night and day. They are not the same. You can believe and yet exercise no faith. And frankly, I think that's the realm most Christians live in. They, you can believe and yet exercise no faith. And you can have doubt in your head, but still take action and make faith work for you. We have an example of that in the Bible with Naaman the leper. He took action on what Elisha said, even though he didn't believe it. And he was healed. You can believe and yet not exercise any faith, not receive, and then assume that it wasn't God's will for you to receive in the first place. We said during the 2019 Holy Week revival, having the money to buy a loaf of bread is not the same as having a loaf of bread. And having the faith to be healed is not the same as being healed. We have an example of that in the book of Acts. Paul saw that a man had the faith to be healed, but he wasn't healed. Having the money to buy a loaf of bread is not the same as having a loaf of bread because you've got to get the money out of your pocket and you've got to get that money into circulation in order to get the bread. You may have money to buy a loaf of bread, but you'll never have the loaf of bread until you turn loose of the money it takes to buy the loaf of bread. You may have the faith to get healed, but you'll never be healed unless you turn loose of the faith it takes to receive your healing. Now, two, maybe three weeks back, a wonderful man in the church came to me, and it was the only, only the second time in the last year I've heard of anybody losing a job or needing a job. I'm sure when I say things like that, there were more, but what I'm, I can only give reference to what I know about. So for the second time in a year, it came to my attention that somebody had lost their job, somebody needed a job, and he comes up and tells me this, and this is not a regular J-O-B, this is a, a high-tech, high-paying deal, and, and he got downsized. And by the time he came to me, well, he'd been looking for a while, and he was not expressing concern. He was speaking words of faith, but reading, hearing between the lines, I thought, you know, he's wondering what to do now. And I don't remember what the message was. We had just done. And I remembered from a champion builder group, him talking about Oral Roberts' book, The Miracle of Seed Faith. So I asked him, I said, have you done what Oral Roberts taught? I said, have you planted a seed for your need? And his eyes lit up. He said, no, I haven't done that. The next service, I think, was a Wednesday night, and he came up, and he handed me an envelope, and in there was a seed for what he needed, a specific seed for what he was believing God for. Then he comes up to me the next service, which I know was a Sunday. No, it was a Wednesday. The next service that he came up and spoke to me was a Wednesday. And he was so excited, man, he was just bouncing. And he said, Pastor, I got the... Oh, and when he handed me that envelope, I took him by the hand and I said, not just a job, a better job and more money. I mean, if we're going to believe God, I mean, right? No point in believing God for a single wide when you can believe God for a double wide. So I said, not just a job, but a better job and better pay. So we're in agreement. Amen. Then he comes to me on Wednesday, literally three days later. Three days later. And, and he's just bouncing. He said, Pastor, I got, I got, I got a job. And my first question is, is it a better job and is it more money? And he said, yes, it's a better job and it's more money. And I, then my next question was, when did you get the job? And he said, Monday. Now, the devil could very well be sitting on your shoulder right now and whispering into your ear, that's a coincidence. Well, coincidences happen in the realm of the devil. Miracles happen in the realm of God.
Believe and I receive is a good thing to do, but that's not the same as faith. Faith can be seen. Say it again. Faith can be seen. See, so he took action. Well, pastor, you're just fundraising. Why would I be fundraising? You know, the money came in November. We paid all this off. Then we had a, a couple of little debts on Mercedes, Benz, uh, Sprinters that we use for St. Paul's. And uh, we had a little debt on a sound equipment upgrade we did uh, a while back. And we sometimes will borrow money to smooth out the expenses because I hate having a horrible month, you know, where it looks like we went in the red. And so uh, before the year ended, the money came in. We, we paid everything off. Faith Christian Center owes no man anything except the debt of love. And we still ended the year in the black. So why would I be fundraising? Do you understand? But Jesus said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. See, you have got to, if you have a need, or even a desire. You don't even have to have a need. If you just have something you want, you have got to find some way to take action on what you say you believe so God can see your faith. Say it again. Faith can be seen. Tell the neighbor on the one side, faith can be seen. Tell the neighbor on the other side, faith can be seen. Number two, faith means having to do something. Faith means having to do something. John 1, 12, but as many as received them to them, he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So it's not just believing. If it was just a matter of believing, all the demons of hell would be saved. How can you say that? Go back to James 2, verse 19. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. So if all it took was believing, all the demons of hell would be saved. People are deceiving themselves into inaction. People are deceiving themselves. We've got young men, and they're believing God to have a family, but they don't talk to girls. You know, it's kind of hard to have a family without getting married. It's kind of hard to get married without getting engaged. Kind of hard to get engaged without going on a date. And it's kind of hard to get a date without talking to girls. Amen. Tell your neighbor, Pastor Gene is an action-taking fanatic. Ain't nothing going to happen in any area of life until you take action. You need to gain weight, take action. You need to lose weight, take action. You know, you feel weak in your body, take action. You need to have some more money, take action. I mean, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. You're not hardly going to get anything out of life until you take action. And who designed all of this? See, the farmer can't reap without taking action. And he's going to actually have to take double action. He's going to have to take action to sow. And then when God blesses the seed with rain, later he's going to have to take action to reap. But we got a lot of people and they're believing, they're believing God for this and they're believing God for that, but they're not taking action. They are self-deceived. James 2.19, you believe that there is one God good, even the demons believe that and shudder. People are deceiving themselves into inaction. James 1.22, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do what it says. Be ye doers of the word of God and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see, your faith must have corresponding action 
in order for it to really be faith and not just belief. Your faith must have corresponding action in order for it to really be faith and not just belief. Now, understanding this can change your entire life. Let's go to an example, Mark chapter 2. An example from Mark chapter 2. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing, a, bringing him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof. You understand they had tile or thatched roofs. They made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, say it out loud three times, when Jesus saw their faith. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. So Jesus said it. Verse 12, he got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. So the paralytic did it and the paralytic received it. This amazed everyone. And they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Look at verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith. How could Jesus see their faith? Because they took action on what they said they believed. And we've got an entire generation. And they, I, I don't even know that they're deciding not to do this. I think they went to church and nobody ever taught them. I think we've got preachers in pulpits and they came up in seminaries and they, they grew up in churches themselves and nobody ever taught them how faith works. But since they could not get him to Jesus, verse 4, because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus and after digging through it, lowered the mat, the paralyzed man was lying on and Jesus did what? He saw their faith. Can Jesus see your faith? I said, can Jesus see your faith? Number three, faith is acting on the Word of God. Say it out loud. Faith is acting on the Word of God. Faith is acting on, the Word of God. Faith is acting on what you believe. And for we who are Christians and believe in the Word of God, faith for us then becomes acting on the Word of God. Faith is acting on the Word of God. Faith is acting on the Word of God. You know, I'm not a COVID believer. I'm a Bible believer. I'm just amazed. I'm not amazed at the world. I'm amazed at Christians. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get what you say. You get what you believe. You get what you say. And you get what you believe when you take action on what you say you believe. Amen. Amen. So... But people, I don't even know that they're deciding to be idle. I think no one ever taught them that faith must be manifested. But you know, there's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for these preachers and there's no excuse for God's people. God comes along to Abraham you know, God says, this is my covenant between me and you, circumcision. Happy days, happy days, happy days. And so that day, I mean, frankly, I'd have had to think about it. <laughs> that very day, Abraham circumcised himself, circumcised everybody, every male in his house. That day, and people... Even Number one, they're not doing the annual Bible reading. But number two, they, they, they read this stuff and they don't, they don't really pay attention to the details that day. And then 
God comes along later after he has the promise and he says, I want you to take them to the place I will show you, which we find out later is Moriah, where the temple sits today, the ruins of the temple sits today. And I want you to take your son Isaac and I want you to sacrifice him. Now, God didn't say it like this, but this was the implication. I want you to sacrifice him like all these pagan people you live around. Now, that's, that's not what God said, but that's, that was the implication. And it, the Bible says the next morning they headed out. He spent his, he was an old man. He was a hundred years old. Spent his whole life believing God for his son. By Sarah. She's an old woman, 90 years old. And they finally get what they were believing God for. And then God comes along and says, I want you to take him to a place I will show you. And I want you to sacrifice him. And the next morning they headed out. But you know, this is one reason people don't pray. Well, you know, I can't pray because the Lord might tell me to do something. Look, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So there's two ways of looking at it. One is, I don't want to pray because the Lord might tell me to do something and I don't want to do something <coughs> or I'm afraid of what, of what he might tell me to do. Turn that coin over. You want a year of miracles? Turn that coin over and say, Lord, I am yours. Command me and I will obey. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So when the Lord tells me to do something, he has already got my miracle lined up. God will be a debtor to no man. So God telling you to do something or give something is not bad news. God telling you to do something or give something is the very best of news. Yeah. Instant obedience. First of all, to the written word of God. Train yourself, train your recreated human spirit by being a doer of the written word of God. And then on top of that, You know, you're just looking at me like a calf staring at a new gate. You know, like a hail sitting there in a hailstorm. Looking around like, what? I thought I was going to get me a nice New Year's, you know, uh, uh, happy message. It is a happy message. Because I'm telling you how you can get your body healed. I'm telling you how you can get your house paid off. I'm telling you how you can live above this old dark world and all their crazy nuttiness. I'm telling you how you can walk in the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We started out all those years ago, 37 years and two days ago. I don't know how much money we had, but it wasn't much. But I'm telling you what, we're sitting in a miracle. You parked on a miracle. You drove up on a miracle. We're worshiping in a miracle. Most of the churches in the United States of America are not even meeting today. But here we are. We got us a great big honking crowd on a holiday Sunday morning. Hallelujah. 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 Everything God does is a miracle. If it's not a miracle, it's not God. So we pray and we obey. We hear the word and we take action on the word of God. And we fearlessly follow the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. Because he does not lead us into the ditch. He leads us beside the still waters and he leads us into the green pastures. Hallelujah. 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 I didn't see all this when we started out, but now I'm a believer, man. I just believe I can do anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe I can do anything. I believe that if I'll just pray and hear God and, and take action on what God says, nothing is impossible. Shout it out loud three times. Nothing is impossible. Mark 11, faith is acting on the word of God. Mark 11:22, and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. 
For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. On Saturday morning, May 4, 2019, the Lord said to me, Confession trumps everything, and this explains so much. So turn your faith loose by saying what you believe. Don't imitate this world out here. They're nuts. You turn your faith loose by saying what you believe, and what you believe ought to be based on what God has said. Confession is not the only way you can take action on the Word of God, but confession is one way you can take action on the Word of God. Verse 24, Mark eleven twenty four, 24, is the catalyst. The catalyst that can release the power of Almighty God into your life and circumstances. This one verse has the potential to take you from sickness to health. This one verse has the potential to take you from poverty to wealth. And here is Jesus, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you what things, so every desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And notice he's talking about things. And also notice that he is talking about your desires, what things soever you desire. He's not talking about the things Father God desires for you. He's not talking about the things he desires for you. No, he's talking about the things you desire for yourself. Religion tells us that we're not supposed to want anything, that it's sinful to want material things. Well, then why do, us all, why do all of us have a desire for things? If all mankind has the same desire, who put that desire inside of us? You see, religion teaches people to be hypocrites. Everyone wants things, but when they get to the church house or around church people, they put on an act. You see, that's what I'm talking about. You can either put on an act for a man, or you can take action on the Word of God. I said you can either put on an act for a man, or you can take action on the Word of God. After all, who did God make all the gold for, the silver for, the diamonds for? Lost folk? Here are three biblical witnesses regarding giving, God giving us our desires. Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. John 15, 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. And then this verse we just gave you, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, therefore I say unto you what things for every desire... When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Notice that your desire is to be coupled with your prayer. Your desire is to be coupled with your praying. Your desire is to be coupled with you believing you receive when you pray. Jesus is showing us how in Mark eleven twenty four 24 to activate the word of God in our lives. Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? I never saw any of this coming. I got to tell you, I, I never saw any of this coming. I mean, I knew when I was a young man, I knew there was going to be a mark of the beast. And, and I knew what the Bible said. I knew that you would not be able to buy or sell without a mark of the beast. I mean, I, I understood this. But I mean, the, the thought never... I could have had a multiple choice test with 1,000 answers and I would never have seen that human beings would become so afraid. That little medical dictators could groom the population of the earth for the Antichrist. I, I never would have seen it coming. I mean, everybody outside of Faith Christian Center, I mean, people are living like a zombie movie where every human being that approaches them is bearing death. You know, I, I shouldn't admit this, I love zombie movies. I mean, but, you know, it's like, oh, there's a person, and then they have to run because it's death coming. And the, the media will never tell anybody. These government doctors never say. 
now that all these months have gone by, there is a 99.95 survival rate. You want me to lose my, you know what, over a 99.95 survival rate? We're not talking about Ebola. The word of God is the easiest thing to put your faith in in 2021. Hear me now. I said the word of God is the easiest thing to put your faith in in 2021. And then you don't have to live on your knees. And you don't have to beg. And you don't have to fear. And you don't have to cower in fear. I say without apology that the miracles in 2021 that God will do for the families of Faith Christian Center will cause us to forget about the miracles of 2020. I declare without apology that our great God has just gotten up and rolling in what he is going to do in our lives. We will be stunned at what God will do in 2021. The miracles of 2020 will pale in comparison to the miracles God will do in this congregation in 2021. Let us not live our lives in fear. Let us rise up in faith. Let us have the word of God in our hearts. Let us have the word of God coming out of our mouths. And let us believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, you sound like you're not afraid. I'm not afraid of anything except Almighty God that can send me to hell. Other than that, I'm not afraid of anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. But too many of God's people are believing for this and believing for that, and they never took action. You got to find a way to take action. You got to find a way to take action. You have to become a doer of the Word of God. Look at Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Another example. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. See, it's all about the word. It's all about the word. It's all about the word. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but at the time of testing, they fall away. The seed of, that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature, 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 mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Say it out loud. The blessing of God is working in me. The blessing of God is working on me. The blessing of God is working around me. Therefore, I boldly declare that I am blessed. And number four, wrapping it up, obedience on money is not the only way we can take action on the Word of God, but it is one way we can take action on the Word of God. Number four, obedience on money is not the only way we can take action on the Word of God, but it is one way we can take action on the Word of God. I love the way John Osteen used to teach about money. He said that money was so important and obedience to God on money was so important because we handle money every day. We need money every day. Money is one of the few things in life, except for food, I guess, but money is something we handle every day. So if we don't get money right, we're going to have a problem. From the beginning of time, it's always been about what a man does. Look at Genesis 4, 6, and 7. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door, desires to have you, it desires to master you. 
but you must master it. In the message on December 13, last year, the six graces of Jesus Christ, we saw that our action taking on giving can be compared with the action taking on giving by others in the body of Christ. You don't think the Lord compares our giving in proportion to our income with the giving of others? I said, you don't think the Lord compares our giving in proportion to our income with the giving of others? You know, I, I ran track back before participation trophies. And they had the doggone dog thing. They had first place. They had second place. They had third place. It was amazing. Now everybody gets first place. I don't know about you, but I don't want to come in last. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to the marriage supper of the Lamb and take a seat up front and somebody come along, some angel come along and say, get to the back. Who, who, who are you? No, I'm going to walk humbly in the back. I'm going to take the back. I'm going to take a chair at the back. And hope, 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 hope somebody, some angel comes along and says, sit up here. I don't want to come in last. And then... You don't have the advantage I have, man. I've been doing this a while. <laughs> you know, I got saved 60 years ago. Been hanging out with full gospel folks 60 years. You don't have the advantage I have because 60 years later, I'm here to testify everything I ever gave God. He turned right around and gave back to me. I said, I'm here to testify everything I ever gave God. He turned right around and gave back to me. And a lot of it he multiplied. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when you're starting out, you don't know that. When you're starting out, I mean, it seems like you're giving something up, and I guess you are. 2 Corinthians 8, 7, but just as you excel in everything, in faith and speech and knowledge and complete earnestness and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I'm not commanding you. Look at what, it, listen to what Paul says. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. And he equates giving with love. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how do you know he's talking about money? I mean, I know he mentions giving, but how do you know he's talking about money? Well, because I can read. And you know, if you'll just read the verse ahead of the one you're focused on and read the verse behind the one you're focused on, you'll have greater revelation on the Word of God. So how about let's read the next verse. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And you know, many, many years ago, I looked all these words up. Poor means poor. Poverty means poverty. Rich means rich. So here's the problem with many modern churchgoers. They don't do the word, hence they are self-deceived. James 1.22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Now let me ask you this. Is it easier or harder for Satan to deceive someone who is already self-deceived? I'm going to say a hard thing, so brace yourself. All of this that happened to our country in 2020 could not have happened to a previous generation. It took decades of brainwashing in public schools. They have literally got at least half of America believing that if we pay higher taxes, the government can control the weather. The government can't control the border. How can the government control the weather? It took decades of churches grooming God's people to not be hearers of the word and doers of the word. Decades of churches entertaining God's people. Decades of churches preaching pop psychology, humanism, humanist psychology, instead of thundering the word of God from the pulpits. Yeah. 
You know, I don't care what kind of nonsense you're peddling. You're not going to convince me of it because I have been trained in the Word of God. The Word of God, the Word of God, just the Word of God, just reading the annual Bible reading, just the Word of God gives you an internal BS meter. And when you hear nonsense, you know, man, that, man, that, 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 that is just nonsense. Ain't going to go for that. They're selling fear. For 37 years and two days, we've been selling faith. Hallelujah. And you can get a lot further down the road with faith than you can fear. Amen. I know that. Mark 2, 5 says, when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, say it out loud, faith can be seen. When Jesus saw their faith, he spoke a rhema Christos to the paralytic. Now, hear what I'm about to say. I know I'm out of time. I got to quit. When Jesus saw their faith. You're not done. You're not done when Jesus sees your faith. When Jesus saw their faith, he spoke a rhema Christos to the paralytic. And the paralytic took action on the rhema Christos from Jesus and was healed. See, take action and let Jesus see your faith. But when you take action and Jesus sees your faith, he may turn right around and give you a rhema Christos. He might turn right around and give you another rhema Christos. You might say, when am I going to be done hearing these rhema Christoses? And when am I going to be done on taking action of the Word of God? Well, when you die or when the Lord comes. And actually, if you want to know the truth about it and if you want to stay out of nursing homes and if you don't ever want to be warehoused a single day in your life, you ought to heed this preacher because the way you have value is to hear God and do what God says. And if you're a believer and you don't hear God and do what God says, what value do you have? When Jesus saw their faith, tell your neighbor, faith can be seen. Tell your other neighbor, faith can be seen. So take action. And let Jesus see your faith. Take action on what the Bible says about money. And let Jesus see your faith. I said, take action on what the Bible says about money. And let Jesus see your faith. I know one thing, he, he's, he, <laughs> he knows I'm a believer. Hallelujah. He knows I'm a believer. Hallelujah. He knows I'm a believer. Hallelujah. 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 My, 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 my. And we're so privileged, we're so blessed. Stop all the complaining. I mean, you know, I squared up with the Lord on tithes in December, double tithes on me and tithes on the kids' retirement accounts and tithes on the grandkids' accounts. And then the thing, I get 37% of this back in April. This is a deal. Amen. I said, this is a deal. Praise God. You know, so... And then in Texas, we're not paying sales tax. I mean, we're not paying, I wish we weren't paying sales tax. We're not paying income tax. I mean, oh my gosh, this is a deal. This is a deal. As long as it lasts, it's a deal. I'll still be tithing if it's not a deal. Amen. Because I, I enjoy the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift both hands, look up to heaven and say, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Faith, can be seen, faith can be seen. And I want you to see my faith. 